In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for our workers training today. Thank you for your people. Thank you for the workers. Thank you for the leaders. Thank you for everyone. We're praying, Lord, that this work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. All the grace we need, all the strength we need, all the wisdom we need, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. No area of your kingdom work will falter. Amen. But everyone will move forward in the strength of the Lord. I will do this work with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. And in the reward will come to the faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, be with us today. Enlighten us in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome you to Lucky District in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that tonight in our district here, the Lord will reveal himself more to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. We're coming to First Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 5. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead in the place of David my father. And I am but a little child, and I know not how to go out and c or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore the servant an understanding heart, to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. And the Lord said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked, for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thy enemies, of thine enemies, and has asked for thyself understanding to the same judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words, and lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall there be, shall any arise like unto thee. I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did keep, did walk, then I will lend thee in thy days. Here we come to what the Lord requested of Solomon. He wanted him to ask whatever he wanted. He wanted him to make any prayer request he wanted. The Lord did not give any limit or any restriction. And the Lord told him, whatever you want, 
however big, however extensive, ask and I will give unto you. The privilege, the promise, the prayer of Solomon are very instructive for us today. We count him special, we count him peculiar because we overlook our own privileges and promises. Many people, when they read these promises that God had given Solomon, will say, that's peculiar, that's special. Nobody else has that kind of promise or that kind of privilege. A spectacular promotion began with the divine encounter. Ask what I shall give thee. And his well-pleasing prayer, give thy servant understanding. Because nobody is able to judge this like great people without that wisdom, that understanding. But you know, we have the same unlimited promise today. As you look at what God gave, uh, the promise that he gave unto Solomon, and you think about a privilege, you understand? We are also told to ask what we want. And when we ask a wisdom, and when we ask to please the Lord, the Lord himself will do the same thing as he did unto Solomon. We're looking at Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, look at the promise the Lord has given us to, similar to that which he gave unto Solomon. Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. You see that? All things whatsoever, just ask in prayer, and it says you will receive. We are looking at Luke chapter 11, verse 9. Luke chapter 11, Verse 9, there you see the extent of the promise the Lord himself has given us. It says, I, and I say unto you, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Then it goes on to say, and knock, it shall be opened unto you. Seek and you shall find. We find the same promise given unto us. There's no limit there. It says, we ask anything, everything we need, and it will be granted unto us. John chapter 14, verse 13. John chapter 14, reading from verse 13. Here it tells us in verse 13, John chapter 14, and whatsoever ye shall ask. Can you see that? Very similar to what God told uh, Solomon. Ask what you want. Ask what I shall give unto thee, and it shall be done. It says over here, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Lord told Solomon just one time, ask what you want. And the Lord is telling us so many times, over and over, and he's saying we shall ask what we want. He's telling us in John chapter 15, and I'm reading from verse 16. John chapter 15, verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit. You will be fruitful in Jesus' name. And that your fruit will, should remain. Our fruit in evangelism, our fruit in so winning a fruit in the ministry will abide in Jesus name look at this now that whatsoever whatsoever you shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you the same promise given to Solomon whatsoever he shall ask the father in my name he'll give it to you we're looking at John chapter 16 verse 23 John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask. You see that? You see that? Very similar to what God told Solomon. It says, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. We're looking at First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. And we're reading here from verse 22. First John chapter 3 reading from verse 22 and whatsoever we ask you see whatsoever whatsoever many people do not understand that the love god manifested to solomon is manifesting to every one of us today and the request he demanded of solomon ask what you want it will be given unto you is given to us today and whatsoever ye, we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things uh, which are pleasing uh, in his sight. We're told that the speech of Solomon pleased the Lord. 
and because the speech of Solomon pleased the Lord, he gave him what he requested. And then he even went beyond that and gave him what he had not asked. And over here we're told whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and we do those things which are pleasing in his sight. We're coming to chapter 5, verse 14. First John chapter 5, verse 14. And this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth, he hear us, whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition we desired of him. Let's come back to first John, uh, sorry, first Kings chapter three, verse fourteen. First Kings chapter three. We're reading from verse 14. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lend thee in thy days. That little word there, if, if thou keep my commandments, if thou walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my statutes, the little word if, that's the price of our progress. That's the price of our productivity tonight. We're looking at this passage, and we're looking at that word in particular, if. And we're looking at the message, the price of progress and productivity. You see, for Solomon, it wasn't an automatic thing because he was the son of David. It wasn't an automatic thing because God loved him. God loves us too. It wasn't an automatic thing just because he happened to be the king after David. God has chosen us and the Lord has appointed us and has put us in place. And he said, the same condition, if, that's the price we pay. If, if you walk in my ways and if you keep my commandments, and if you keep my statutes, then I will lend thee in thy days. The price of progress and productivity will make progress in Jesus' name. Amen. Will be productive in Jesus' name. Amen. In the work of the Lord, you'll be productive. Amen. In your family, you'll be productive. Amen. In the ministry, you'll be productive. Amen. In everything you set your hand to, you'll be productive. In everything the Lord has appointed for you to do. And has appointed that this is the way, what key you need, you'll be productive in Jesus' name. But it's a price to pay. Many people think that, you know, for Solomon, he didn't have to pay any price at all. It was just there. And the promise was there. The promise was going to be fulfilled. But God said, you know, Solomon, you must understand the way I deal with men. And you must understand my disposition. You must understand my disposition you must understand how i work how i relate what promises i give out and the condition by which i fulfill those promises there is an if there's a condition there's a proviso that the lord had given and he has said if you will walk in my ways then will i lend thee your days if you will do what pleases me your prayer pleases me your speech pleases me now follow up with the character that pleases god follow up with the a lifestyle that pleases God. Follow up with the obedience that, that uh, pleases God. And if you please me, if that's the condition, that's the price, then you are going to make progress. And the same thing is telling you and telling me that we are going to make progress. I am going to make progress. I am going to be productive. In your family, you'll be productive. In the work of your hand, you'll be productive. In the ministry the Lord has given us will be productive in Jesus' name. There's a price to pay. The price of progress and productivity. I come into this under three subtitles. Number one, the promise in the little word if. The promise in the little word if. It's a little word, but it says much. It's a little word, but it contains much. It's a little word, it produces much. It's a little word, it promotes us a lot. If, if thou will walk in my statutes, the promise in the little word, if. Point number two, the price of lasting wealth. 
the price of lasting wealth was the price if it says so it says to us our wealth will not be temporary our wealth will not be just for a day or a week or for a short time lasting wealth wealth in every area it talks about the price of lasting wealth if and then number three the progress of loyal workers the progress of loyal workers based and hinged on that word if the progress of loyal workers tell me number one there the promise in the little word if i want you to follow now and see the promise in this little word if let's look at first kings chapter 3 verse 14 again first kings chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 14 and if thou wilt walk in my ways that's the little word A. And if thou will keep my statutes, that's the little word A. And if thou will keep my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then, then on that basis, on that condition, on that proviso, on that pivot, on that hinge, I'm going to lend thee in thy days. Let's look at that word if in Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And said, tell me the next word. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and if you will keep, if you will do that which is right in my sight, and if you will give ear unto his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. I thought lucky and the people will say amen, amen. Which are brought upon the Egyptians For I am the Lord that healeth thee You see that little word there Abe, It says this is the condition You can be healthy You can be strong Without sickness, without infirmity And you can go on in the work of the Lord Without any weakness and without uh, you know lying down I cannot work today because I'm sick No you will not be sick because it gives us the little what if he says if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the lord your god and you will keep my statutes and walk in my commandments i will not bring those diseases upon you which i brought upon the egyptians i am the lord that healeth thee i am healed in jesus name i thought you say it for say i said i am healed in jesus name we're looking at chapter 19 chapter 19 verse 5 you're looking for the little word if chapter 19 we're reading from verse 5 we're looking for what word are we looking for it says now therefore if you will obey my voice look at that look at that the children of israel did not just have the open check without any condition and without any restriction and without any proviso that this is what they must do it says if in verse 5 if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my commandments then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for the earth is mine you'll be peculiar from today all you need to do is look at that little word if in your life look at the commandments of god look at the statutes of god and look at the stipulations of the lord and he says this is what you do chapter 23 verse 22 exodus 23 i'm reading from verse 22 exodus chapter 23 verse 22 but but tell me the next word there you see that it's all about the word of god and many people don't understand they think it's automatic you are sick you're forever saved no condition that's what they say it's not true you're healed you're forever healed no condition that's not true you're prospered you're forever prospered and without any condition that's not true you're in favor with god and you're forever in favor with god without any condition that's not true there's a condition there's a condition. Look at verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and will and do all that I speak, then I'll be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. Look at verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. This promise is mine. I said this promise is mine. And he shall bless thy bread 
and he shall bless thy water and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Those, sickness that, those sicknesses that cause a premature death, they're taken away. And those sicks that uh, make you know, just fall down, you don't know what you're going to do again, they take you to this hospital, that hospital, that hospital, and they say they cannot find the cause of the sickness. Thank God you are free. I'm talking to somebody there tonight. I said you are free in Jesus' name. But you know, there's a proviso, there's a condition, there is an if there, and it tells us in verse 26, there shall nothing cast their young. That's mine. That's mine. Now be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Show me somebody who will not die young. Show me somebody who will not die prematurely. You'll keep on doing the work of God. And the Lord is saying he will fulfill the number of your days in Jesus' name. On condition there's an if. On condition there's an if. It says, if you obey my voice, if you follow me, if you do my will, if you fulfill that will and you fulfill that word, it says, blessings upon blessings. Amen. Promotion and progress. Amen. Prosperity in your life. Amen. And joy all through the way in your life in Jesus' name. Well, we're looking in at Deuteronomy chapter 12, Deuteronomy chapter 7 rather. Chapter 7 verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I'm reading here from verse 12. Read to me chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 12. It says, wherefore it shall come to pass. Wherefore it shall come to pass. Tell me the next word. If ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which uh, with, which is where unto thy fathers, verse 15, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Amen. How many sicknesses? Oh. How, many, how many sicknesses did came from you? I say from you in particular. Oh. He'll take all sicknesses away from you. Yeah. Sickness will not hinder the work of God in your hand. Yeah will not hinder your progress in Jesus name but remember but remember if if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God if you will listen unto the voice of the Lord your God then he tells us the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee give me a good amen, amen. but will lay them upon all them that hate thee and thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shall thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto you. There's an if there, and it's telling us we need to continue following the will of God. We're coming to First Kings chapter 6. First Kings chapter 6, and I'm reading here from verse 11. First Kings chapter 6, what verse? Yeah. Verse 11, and the word of the Lord came to Solomon saying, concerning these sounds which thou art in building. Tell me the next word. If thou will walk in my statutes uh, you know there are people that they, they read their bible they never notice the word if and it's in the old testament it's in the new testament the word if is everywhere there's a condition that god has put upon the fulfillment of his promises he doesn't want you living in his house without paying your rent he doesn't want you living and walking on his land without showing gratitude unto him and without obeying him, he wants you, he requires of you, he demands of you that you will obey his commandments. He tells us here, he says concerning this house, which thou art in building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word with thee, which I speak unto David thy father. It says, there's one condition. Solomon, 
if I'm going to fulfill the promises I give you, and if I'm going to do everything I promise you I'm going to do, that condition you must fulfill. You must do the will of God. And David understood that. David understood the importance, the centrality of this word if. We're looking in at First uh, Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 28. We're reading from verse 9. First Chronicles, tell me your chapter and the verse. And thou, Solomon, my son, know the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, Look at what David was telling him, his son. Look at what the pastor should tell all his members. Look at what the father should tell all his children. Look at what a leader should tell all the followers. It says, if thou, if indeed, in that verse 9, if thou will seek him with all your heart, he will be found of thee. But, tell me, but tell me, if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off. How long? What does that mean? Now, Solomon, God is pleased with you. And God has appointed you. And God has put you in place. And God has showed favor on you that he did not show to any of my children. David was saying, if you keep on seeking him, he will be found of you. But... If you forsake him, he'll cast you off. Tell me how long. If he is cast off forever, will he get to heaven? No. no. That means then, after we're saved, after we're born again, he has shown us favor. He has shown us his goodness. He has shown us his mercy. If we keep on seeking him, if we keep on following him, if we keep on serving him, his favor will continue with us. If a believer then forsakes God and he says, no, I want to go to the world. I want to go and enjoy sin. I want to follow after the devil. And he dies in that condition. Where will he go? Tell me out loud. He'll go to hellfire because the Lord will forsake him forever and ever. We're coming to Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. We're reading from verse 13. Job chapter 11 verse 13. Tell me the first word there. If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles, for then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot, yea, thou shalt be steadfast, and shalt not fear, because thou shalt forget thy misery. You'll forget the past suffering in Jesus' name. And remember, it as waters that pass away. And then age shall be clearer than the noonday. And it says, and thou shalt shine forth. And thou shalt shine forth. And thou shalt be as the morning. And then he goes on to say, and thou shalt be secure. Because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. And thou shalt lie down, and none shall make you afraid. Yea, and many shall make suit unto thee. Another amen. amen. We're looking at Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah. Chapter 3, we're reading from verse 6. Zechariah, chapter 3. Let's go to verse 7 directly. Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 7. In Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 7, it says in verse 7, Thus says the Lord of hosts. Tell me the next word there. If thou will walk in my ways, these people that say that the promises of God have no condition. The salvation of God has no condition. 
fellowship with God has no condition. Which Bible are they reading? The people that says you are saved and forever saved got no condition. Which Bible are they reading? The people that say the favor of God is always with you. Which Bible are they reading? The Bible we have says, If thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my people, and shalt also keep my cause. And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. I pray that that promise will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verse 22, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 22. Often times and oft times it has cast him into the, into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But, tell me, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. You see, this man, he was putting the if on the side of God, the if on the side of Christ, the if on the side of the ancient of this, the if on the side of Christ that has all authority and can do all things. Of course, we know Christ can do all things. Christ can save. Christ can heal. Christ can deliver. Christ can keep you. Christ can effect all the fulfillment of the promises of God in our lives. But there are people that put all the Eve on the side of God and they say, if thou canst do anything and because you can do anything, keep me safe without paying any price. Keep me safe without looking at the word if in the conditions that you have given. Look at what Jesus now said to him. Jesus said unto him, tell me, Tell me, if thou canst believe, Jesus said, don't put the if on my side. On my side, I'm divine. On my side, I'm the, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. On my side, with me, all things are possible. On my side, I can do everything. I can do all things. The if is on your side. If thou will walk in my statutes, if thou will walk in my ways, if thou will believe on the Lord, it says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Thank God I believe. I say, thank God I believe. Uh, we're looking, we're looking at John chapter 8, John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 20, from verse 32, John chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 32, John chapter 8, reading from verse 32, it says, uh, uh, verse 31, verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. They already believed on him. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, are you saved or not saved? Are you a believer or unbeliever? Do you have your name in the book of life in heaven or, or not? I, what? When you believe, when you believe, it says, Jesus said unto those Jews which believed on him. Tell me. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You see, many people don't understand, and they don't notice that word, if. That word, if. That little word, if, is attached by God himself to all his promises in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. All truthful and faithful servants of God emphasize the condition if in God's promises. I've read to you already, Moses emphasized the word if, Joshua emphasized the word if, David emphasized the word if, Elijah, Isaiah. You know Elijah, when Elisha said, uh, give, him, give me the double portion of thy spirit, then Elijah said, you have asked a hard thing. What's the next word there? If, if thou see me if, as I go. You see, that, that's the thing that people are not taking notice of. If our progress depends on that if. Our productivity depends on that if. And our success promotion depends on that if. If you see me when I'm going, it shall be yours. But if you don't, then it will not happen. Elijah emphasized it. And then Jeremiah emphasized it. Isaiah emphasized it. And Ezekiel emphasized the word if. And the Lord Jesus comes with his apostles. Souls, they emphasize the word if and Peter and John and Paul and James all faithfully emphasized the condition of God's promises if not even Solomon 
the greatest and the wisest of the kings of the land at the promises of God without the condition. The condition was there even for Solomon if and neither Peter nor Paul the greatest of apostles in the New Testament and the promises of God without condition the conditions are there and I pray God will help you to fulfill the condition and as you fulfill the condition you pay the price and then progress will be yours productivity will be yours and the goodness of God will continue your life in Jesus name point number two now the price of lasting wealth the price of lasting wealth. We're coming back to First Kings chapter three. First Kings chapter three, and we're reading from verse ten. First Kings chapter three, we're reading from verse ten. The price of lasting wealth. In First Kings chapter three, reading here from verse ten, it says in verse ten, and the speech pleased the Lord. That Solomon had asked this thing, and God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked the, for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked uh, the life of thine enemies. It says in that, uh, verse, in that verse 11, But hast asked for thyself, uh, as asked for thyself uh, understanding uh, to discern judgment. It says, Behold, I have done according to thy word. They will hear your prayer. Yeah. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. If you ask for wisdom, greater wisdom today, he'll give you that wisdom in Jesus' name. Yeah. Wisdom to evangelize. Wisdom to have a source into the kingdom. Wisdom to do the work of God that has appointed for you. And wisdom to succeed in that work he has given you. He will give you an understanding heart. So that there was none like thee before thee. Neither after thee shall there shall arise any like unto thee. I have also given thee. Look at this. I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. It will go beyond your expectation. It will go beyond your prayer. It will give you beyond your request. It says they're both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the, among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Verse 14, read it for me. God bless you. And if thou, if thou, if thou, if thou in particular, if thou will walk in my ways and to keep my statutes and my commandments and that as thy father David did walk, then I will lend thee in thy days. Long life. It depends on our obedience to the Lord. You know, some people, they have the idea that, well, uh, God has already decided how long I will live. Some people said God has determined for them only 63 years. And when they become sick at 63 years, they say, that's what God has appointed. No, no, he has not appointed three years for me. I said he has not appointed three years for me. There is a prolonging of the number of your years. There's a lengthening of thy days. If you want to serve God, if you're saying, God, this is a new thing happening now. The church being planted everywhere and every house, we're touching every house. I want to live to see this. I want to see the time when our local church, our district church, and our new group, when they will reach everybody in that community. I want to remain alive to see this explosion of evangelism and this explosion of church planting lord i'm not ready to die now you will not die i said you will not die who knows it might add 15 years more to your years it might add 25 years more to your years and you will live to see the expansion of the kingdom of god in jesus name but if you're already tired at 63 62 if you're already dragging at 63, 62, and you say, when are they going to allow us to retire? Somebody wants to retire there? 
from evangelism somebody wants to retire there from church planting when are they going to allow us to retire why don't they have a program of retirement for you know all of us so that maybe at 60 then we go and sleep on our bed and then we're waiting for whatever will happen no we're not waiting I said we're not waiting for whatever will happen we're moving on somebody there said we're moving on and we're going to keep in the work of the Lord in Jesus name and if thou will keep my ways, if thou will keep my statutes, and if thou will walk in my ways, and then you keep my commandments, he says, I will lend thee your days. I will lend thee your days. If you are claiming the promise of God, let me see your hand. I will lend thee your days. I will lend thee your days. It will prolong your life in Jesus' name. God's promises, God's provision, and God's prosperity plan are for everyone. He is a no respecter of persons. He is impartial. He, as he is not willing that any should perish, is not willing that anyone should suffer here, should continue to suffer in poverty, or should continue to suffer, or should suffer pain, punishment, perdition in hell. He loved Solomon. He loves me. I said he loved Solomon. He loves me. I said he loves Solomon, it's, he loves me. You know some people, they say, I wish I was Solomon. Uh-uh, don't wish you are Solomon. Wish that you are yourself. And where you are, and who you are, and the way you are. He created you like that, and he placed you where he has placed you now, and that love of God will never fail in your life. He loved Solomon, and he loves me. He loves all. He promised Solomon and gave him wisdom, understanding, riches, and wealth. He has also uh, promised him long life. And thank God, I am going to have long life. I said, I am going to have long life. If you say that yourself, and you say it according to the promise of God, and then you are keeping the condition, it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. His promises for every one of us are great and yet the condition is there and the condition is based on if. If thou shalt walk in my ways. Uh, let, let's see this. We're looking at Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 3. Leviticus chapter 26. Reading from what verse? What word are you looking for? I said, what word are you looking for? Look at this, chapter 26, verse 3. It says, if, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. And the land shall yield an increase. The work of your hand will yield increase. And the progress you have will not know any limit in Jesus' name. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing floor and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage. And the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full. And dwell in your land safely. And I will give you peace in the land. And ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will read evil bees out of your land. The, neither shall the sword go through thy, your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. Five of you shall chase an hundred, and hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. And I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful. And make you fruitful. And make you fruitful. And multiply you. And establish my covenant with you. But do you see that uh, pie there? Do you see the fulcrum there? Do you see the point that everything depends on there in verse 3? If, if you will walk in my ways. If you will keep my statutes, if you'll keep my commandments, if we're coming to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28. 
reading from verse 1 and it shall come to pass tell me the next word if thou shalt hearken diligently you see that it's everywhere in the word of God you want his prosperity plan if you want to make progress spiritual progress if you want fruitfulness in your family if you want the work of God to prosper in your heart if and you want to move from this level to the next level if it says if thou shalt uh, hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all nations of the earth do you know that your local church can be the biggest and greatest church in that community in Jesus name yeah. it can happen yeah. not only big in membership big in land capacity and big in the building and it's a kind of a thing that people say that's the best church building I've ever seen in that community I didn't hear my people it will happen in Jesus' name. You see, there are people, and they want, uh, you know, something local somewhere, something that is, they say, what matters is just the membership. If the membership is there, even if we have to, you know, bend and crawl into the church building, uh -uh, everything will be spectacular. Yeah. Membership multiplied. And the church building, wonderful. And it can be the best in that community. That's what God will do. I said that God, what God will do. Because the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee. And overtake thee. What's the next word? If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Look at verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up uh, against thee to be smitten before thy face. And thou shalt come, thou shalt come, they shall come out against thee one way, and they shall flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and also in all that thou settest thy hand unto. All that thou settest thy hand unto. You know that everything you get involved with can be successful? Crusades will be successful? Evangelism will be successful. Church planting will be successful. Your business will be successful. All your children will be successful. And everything, the family project will be successful in Jesus' name. Because the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, and he as see as one unto thee. Tell me the next word. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground. And in the, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless, to bless, tell me, and to bless, tell me, all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee, and the Lord shall make me, and the Lord shall make, shall make you the head and not the tail. And I shall be above only, and I shall not be beneath. Tell me the next word there. If 
thou hack him. You see the condition there. That's the price. That's the price. There are many people that do not notice that price. They do not understand. There is an if. There's a condition. There's a proviso that we must fulfill. It says, if thou shalt hack him you know, unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, uh, which I command thee this day, and to observe, to do them, it will be fulfilled in your life. Amen. We're coming now to Job chapter Job chapter 36 Job chapter 36 and we're reading from verse 11 Job chapter 36 reading from verse 11 Job chapter 36 verse 11 are you there tell me the first word if you see that it's there. Every part of the word of God. If we're going to receive promotion, if we're going to make progress, if we're going to have productivity, the word if is there. It says in verse 11, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Verse 12, tell me what's in verse 12. But if they obey not, but if they obey not, if they say, I'm a child of God, always a child of God. If they say, I'm saved, always saved. If they say, I have favor with God, always favor with God. And therefore, they live careless lives. And they do not know, they do not understand. The promises of God have conditions. It says, but if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. If they die in that condition, where do they go? They go to hell. They go to hell because they're not looking at the condition that God has given. And I pray that these conditions will be fulfilled in your life. Yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1. Reading from verse 18. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. Says the Lord, do your sins be as carnage, they shall be as white as snow. Do they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Tell me the first word, now verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Holiness is profitable. Righteousness is profitable. Obedience to the word of God is profitable. It says, if. Ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Tell me what you'll find in verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, if you refuse and rebel, if you say God, God's love is eternal, God's oppression, dispensation is eternal, and whatever I do, wherever I put my leg, and wherever I go, even if I follow Satan, even if I'm walking for Satan after walking for God, all will be well. It says, no, all will not be well. Because in verse 20, if ye refuse and rebel, it shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. We're coming to Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. God is going to prosper you now. And God is going to give you more than you are even requesting. Yeah. We're coming to Malachi chapter 3. And we're looking at verse 10. Bring here all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now therewith saith the Lord. Tell me. If I will not open the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. It says, if we want this prosperity, let's follow the prosperity plan. It says, if you want this, then bring all the tithes in the storehouse. And I will pour blessings upon you. There shall not be room enough to receive it. Isn't that similar to what God has given Solomon? When he said, even the things you have not asked for, I've given unto you. Your prayer will be answered beyond your request. Yeah. Verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Yeah. 
and it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call, and all nations shall call, and all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. We're coming to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 13. Romans chapter 8. Verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, what will happen? Tell me out loud now. If ye live after the flesh, shall die. But if ye live through the spirit, and you mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Was he talking to believers or unbelievers? Tell me out loud. He was talking to believers. Believers. How do we know he was talking to believers? Look at chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And I continues talking to them. And he's talking to these believers. And he says, if you live after the flesh, after you become a believer, and then you go back to the flesh life, fleshly life. If you live after the flesh, he shall die. But if ye through the spirit do modify the deeds of the, the, deeds of the body, he shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. He was talking to believers. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit is said, bear it witness with the Spirit that we are the children of God. And tell me. If children, if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, tell me, if so be that he suffer with him, that we may be also glorified with him. You can see there the E, that after we have known the Lord, and after he has given us promises, must make sure that we're obedient to the word of God. Old Testament and New Testament, Romans. Chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 22. Romans chapter 11, reading from verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God, on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness. Tell me the next word. If thou continue in his goodness. Towards thee goodness. If thou continue in in his goodness otherwise thou shalt be cut off otherwise thou shalt be cut off we're looking at Colossians Colossians chapter 1 in Colossians chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 21 Colossians chapter 1 verse 21 and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now as he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Was he talking to believers or unbelievers? Believers was the first word in verse 23. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. See what the Lord is telling us here. He says, His prosperity plan has the word A. His promises have the word A. His provision have the word A. And if those promises are going to be fulfilled, I thank God they are going to be fulfilled. Amen. There must be the fulfillment of the condition if in our lives. So come to point number three now. The progress 
of loyal workers. The progress of loyal workers. We're coming to First Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3, verse 14. And if thou will walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lend thee thy days. He will give you more time to serve the Lord. And all the past uh, negligence and loss, you recover in Jesus' name. If you think, I wish I had known all this before. Don't worry. All the time we've lost in the past, the Lord is going to repay us. All the time we've wasted in the past, the Lord is going to lengthen our days. And we're going to see greater opportunity in serving the Lord in Jesus' name. If we're loyal. If we're committed unto him, if we're obedient unto him, then he says this work is going to prosper more and more in our hands and it's going to add to our days of serving the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58 and we're reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 58. Verse 10. And if thou draw thy, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul. He's telling us now what a commitment ought to be and what a yieldedness ought to be. And he says, A, will draw out a soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness as the noonday. The Lord shall guide thee continually. And remember the first uh, two words in verse 10. Tell me the first two words there. If and if and if and if thou. Then it says, if we keep the commandments of God and we draw ourselves out to those who are hungry, to those who are waiting for the bread of life, those who are waiting for the water of life, it says, the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water, whose waters fail not, and they that be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. We're looking at Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 16. In Luke chapter 16, reading from verse 10. Luke chapter 16, reading from verse 10. He tells us, He that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful in that which is much. And he that is unjust in that which is least is unjust in that of much. If therefore, that's the word again, the words of Jesus Christ. If therefore, ye shall not, ye have not been faithful in the righteous mammon who will give you, will commit unto to you a trust of true riches. And if ye have not been faithful, God will make you faithful. If ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? The if is there all through the Bible. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Reading from verse 24. John chapter 12. Verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the weight of God fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But, tell me, if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. When you die to your own request, you die to your own desires, you die to your own likings and say, I'm going to serve the Lord. Even if it goes against my will and against self, I'm going to serve the Lord all the same. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Tell me verse 6, 26 now. If any man serve me, let him follow me. 
and where I am, there shall also be my servant. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. You can see there the condition of the Lord. There's an if there. Chapter 15 of John. John chapter 15. We're reading from verse 6. John chapter 15, verse 6. Are you there? Tell me the first word. If a man abide not in me. He was in Christ before. Saved. A new creature in Christ. A child of God. But if, if he takes my grace for granted... If he takes that salvation for granted, if he takes my fellowship with him for granted, and he says, well, I'm saved, I'm forever saved, and whatever I do, God does not see it anymore. God only sees me in Christ. That's a lie. He sees you. He sees your works. He sees your heart. He sees your life. You have the grace to overcome. You are not overcoming. How about the sinners that don't have any grace to overcome, and they are punished because they are not overcoming. And you have in the grace, and you have in the goodness of God, and then you are not making use of that grace, and you are not abiding. Look at what follows. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them, where? Into the fire, and they are, they are burnt. When a believer goes back into sin and doesn't abide in Christ, does he get to heaven if he dies in that condition? I can't hear church. No. Look at verse 7 now. If ye abide in me, I'm the abiding worker. I said I'm the abiding worker. I'm the abiding preacher. I'm the abiding servant of God. You will abide in Jesus' name. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what she will and it shall be done unto thee. Give me a good amen. amen. Herein is my father glorified that she be a much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. You'll be a fruit. Amen. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Tell me verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 16. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me, tell me. Woe is me, tell me. If I preach not the gospel. For if I do this sin willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Look at verse 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I may gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law. As without law. Not being without law to God. But under the law to Christ. That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak. And that I might gain the weak. I have made all things to all men. That I might by all means. Tell me. That I might by all means save some. That's why it says then in verse 27. But I keep my body under. Apostle, but I keep my body under. A believer, I keep my body under. The greatest of apostles in the New Testament. But I keep my body under. And bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means... I, when I have preached to others, tell me, 
I myself should be a castaway. It's giving us the condition. It's giving us the if there. And it's giving us the proviso that we must keep on serving the Lord and do the work of the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and do it faithfully, loyally, as loyal workers, faithful workers. We're looking at Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse uh, 9. Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 9. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing. You will not be weary. In evangelism, you will not be weary. In church planting, you will not be weary. In serving the Lord, you will not be weary. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap. If we faint not, if we faint not, as she therefore, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 3. We're reading from verse 6. In Hebrews chapter 3, from verse 6, here it tells us, But Christ, as a son, over his own house, whose house we are, tell me, whose house we are, tell me, if we hold fast the confidence of our rejoicing and of the hope firm unto the end. That's what we should do. Hold it fast unto the end. Verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. Tell me the next word. If. You see that? We're saved. We're born again. We're children of God. We're servants of God. We're preachers of the gospel. We're church planters. But it says we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end you will endure to the end yeah. and your light will shine more and more yeah. and the work of god will prosper in our hands more and more yeah. the conditions are there we must fulfill the conditions and as we fulfill the conditions the lord himself will make this work to prosper in your hand in my hand in our hands in jesus name yeah. i say chapter 60 Isaiah chapter 60, I'm reading from verse 1. Arise, your time has come. Shine, I said your time has come. For the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Look at verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. The unbelievers in your community, they'll come to the light of the gospel. They will receive the gospel from you in Jesus' name. And kings to the brightness of the rising. Highly placed people, professional people, and those who have been, you know, staying back and pulling back, they will come and will abide in the church in Christ in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lift, up, lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. They come, they come, they come to thee. They are coming. Thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughter shall be nursed by thy side. And it says in verse 5, Then thou shalt see, and flow together, and thy heart shall fear, and be enlarged. You'll be enlarged in Jesus' name. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come to thee. I thought you will say amen there. Then he tells us in verse, in verse 10, the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. In, the, in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gate shall be open continually, and they shall not be short day nor night. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, 
and that their kings may be brought unto me. For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Then he goes on and on to verse 17. For brass, I'll give you gold. For iron, I'll bring silver. For wood, brass. For, I, for stones, iron. And I will make thy officers peace. And then exact us righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting or destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation. And thy gates praise. The sun shall no more, thy sun shall no more, the sun shall no more be thy light by day. Neither shall the brightness uh, shall moon, uh, sorry, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy God, thy glory, thy sun uh, shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord, for the Lord, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. Thy days of mourning shall be ended. Thy people shall all be righteous. Thy people shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hand, that I may be glorified. Yeah. Verse 22. Look at this one. I say verse 22. Yeah. Look at this one. Read it for yourself. Yeah. Read it again and claim it for yourself. Looks like your time of promotion has come. Your time of progress has come. Your time of productivity has gone. We have just uh, divided our, our groups of districts and we make them compact so that the group of pastors will be able to touch every every area and it says a little one now shall become a thousand. And then we've done, we've done something new. We've done something new. We've made the new and the old group pastors, we've made them to have church location where they will be pastoring themselves so that their church will be a model. Look at the group pastor and look at the way his church is growing. There's a good church building there and it will not be less than 1,000. And then the people are there, children, youth, adult, professional, kings, and highly placed people. They are all there so that the group pastor can show an example to all the other, all the other districts under his group. And it will not be do as I say and not do as I do. It's showing the model. It's showing the example. And it says over here, a little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, have spoken it. I will hasten it in His time. Your time of blessing has come. Your time of progress has come. And your time of productivity has gone. If thou walk in my ways, if thou keep my statutes, if thou keep my commandments, no grudging, no complaining, no murmuring. We're just saying now, we're excited in following the Lord. And we're excited in doing what the Lord wants us to do. And it says, there's going to be progress. There's going to be productivity. And there's going to be prosperity. And every, beyond your prayer, beyond your effort, beyond your evangelism, beyond your church planting, the Lord is going to multiply the work in your hand in Jesus' name. 
if you know your time has come rise up and tell the lord i thank you lord i thank you lord i thank you lord my time has come my time has come my time of progress my time of productivity and my time of serving the lord without looking back my time has come my time has come remember the condition remember the condition remember the condition if thou if thou if thou if thou will keep my commandments and do the things that are pleasing unto me then it says all these promises shall be yours